In our previous video, we talked about this idea of generalizing the construction of the Cantor set to sets that had the same properties, but that had positive measure. So the idea now will be if I'm given some number beta, then can I construct f such that the measure of f is equal to this number beta and that f has all the properties that Cantor set has? Well, I gave you a kind of big clue in the previous video because we were trying to get beta to be equal to one half. So let's see what happens when we start with any alpha that's positive smaller to one half. We will see that then we will have to restrict it a bit more, but to start one half will make sense. So what we will do is we will start with a unit interval like we did so far, and we will call this set f sub zero. So our idea will be now to remove some part of the set and then call this part f1. What we will do is remove the middle alpha. That is, we will take some interval here that has measure alpha. And so when we remove this interval, then we'll just get this first iteration. And then for, for the second iteration, we will remove the middle alpha squared for each of the intervals. And call this final set F2. And well, I'm sure you already know how to continue. For the next step, we will be removing the middle alpha to the power 3 on each of the intervals. And so we go on indefinitely and then define the function f to be the intersection from k equals 1 up to infinity of the f sub k's. And so what we're doing is on the step k, we are removing 2 to the k minus 1 intervals of length alpha to the k. So what will the measure of f be? Well, it's going to be the zero one minus the things we subtracted. So the measure of the zero one minus the sum from k equals one to infinity of everything that we subtracted and we took 2 to the k minus 1 intervals of length alpha to the k. So let's see if we can make this sum a bit better. This is the measure of the 0, 1 is 1. And I can just take a common factor alpha and say this is alpha the sum from k equals 1 up to infinity of 2 alpha to the power k minus 1. And now I can just move the index to start from 0 and we will have 1 minus alpha the sum from k equals 0 up to infinity and this just adds 1 to the k inside the sanatory. So we will have k minus 1 plus 1, this is k. And so this is the reason why we actually said alpha to be smaller than one half, because then two alpha is smaller to one, and this is a geometric series that we know converges, and we can calculate what it converges to, because it will be one minus. The limit of this series will be one over one minus the ratio, and the ratio is two alpha. So, we can rewrite this, just common factor, 1 minus 2 alpha, and we would get 1 minus 2 alpha minus alpha. 
and so this is just 1 minus 3 alpha 2 alpha here if we want this to be positive then we need to ask alpha to be smaller than one third so that's the restriction I said at the beginning of the video that we are going to have over alpha so this will be the measure of f so now what if I'm giving some beta greater to zero and I want the measure of f to be exactly beta well then beta has to be 1 minus 3 alpha divided by 1 minus 2 alpha and so alpha was the ratio that we were using to remove intervals from the zero one so here we can actually isolate the alpha and this is a star mobius transform the or a matrix if you want so alpha will be equal to beta minus one divided by 2 beta minus 3. I think this is right, um, but it's basically the inverse transform. Um, so I'm given beta, I can calculate this alpha, and then just use alpha as the ratio to eliminate sets from the 0, 1, and then eventually I would get my original set F with measure beta and this will be positive so this is what generalizes the definition of a counter set and it's called fat counter because it's getting a measure that's positive 